So, welcome all of you. Since the last class, we started discussing about two dimensional NMR. In the last class, I even discussed about what is 2D NMR, what are different time periods, what is any 2D experiment has basically pulse sequences, basic pulse sequence consists of a preparation period, evolution period, mixing period and detection period, I said. Whereas, the conventional simple only NMR apply a pulse, collect the signal. One time domain you collect the signal, do the Fourier transformation, you get a one dimensional spectrum. You collect the, do a pulse sequence, design a pulse sequence, in which have two time periods. One is constant, other is a incremented and create a pseudo time domain data. There also you will have a oscillatory function, time domain signal. Do the double Fourier transformation of it, you get a two dimensional spectrum. You have a 10 time periods where n minus 1 varied, 1 is kept constant, you get n dimensional spectrum. That is what I explained to you, what is n dimensional NMR. And of course, there is a time constraint. As you go to higher and higher dimensionality, time requirement for doing the experiment is more and more. 1D NMR may be taking few minutes, 2D NMR few hours, uh, half an hour to one hour, 3D experiment few hours, 4D experiment few days, 5D may take weeks. And also another thing is it depends upon the molecular size. There is a constant of the time and depending upon the molecular size, you should decide what experiment you want. For example, a molecule of small organic molecules which we have been discussing, 1D will do most of the time. You do not require 2D, but slightly complex molecule, you can go to 2D. A bigger protein of the, you know, about 30, 40 kilo Dalton, you can go to 3D. Even more, you can go to 4D. Slightly higher, 80, 90 kilo Dalton. Not only you have to use 4D plus, you have to use some other experimental techniques like labeling and rosy varieties of other experiments. That is what I said. But now, we will start today with a uh, discussion on how do you choose the dimensionality for your given molecule. Let us start with that. For example, I consider a molecule like this, which we analyze the spectra. In the 1D NMR, very easily you can analyze. Simply look at the CA3, it is a triplet and this is a quartet, this is a triplet, this is a quartet and this is a quartet, you know, of a trip, quartet of triplet, this is triplet. Very easily we look at the 1D NMR spectrum like this, I can analyze it. Triplet, quartet, everything. Not much of a difficulty is there in analyzing this. So, you do not require more than 1D for this and 2D and higher experiments are not needed at all. You do not need both either 2D or any higher dimensions. 1D will do, that will give you the required information. On the other hand, goes to a molecule like this. This molecule is called strychnine. This is 1D NMR spectrum. Compared to this, it is slightly difficult, slightly complex. Not very complex. If you are already working in the NMR, spend let us say a couple of weeks or months already working in that. If you work for a couple of months, this is fairly simple. You can interpret it, analyze in less than half an hour to one hour. Maybe if not half a day, if you are inexperienced, maybe within a day you can analyze it. It won't take much time. So one day NMR is will fairly is will do your job. But in case if you want to make it faster and if if you think it is still difficult to analyze because of complex multiplicity overlap etc. 2D will do. You can do a 2D experiment for this and definitely 2D is enough to get the required information for assignment of the peaks etc. And you do not need 3D and higher dimensions for this molecule. The definitely you do not require. Go to a molecule like this. It is carbon 13, 15 labeled ubiquitin. A big protein. A typical HNCO experiment, three dimensional is given here. Each peak is so many peaks are there in this. For the such a molecule, and there are two carbon three nitrogen 15 labeled, 3D will definitely require. You may not be able to do know, only with 2D. And then if, if you want to go to even bigger molecule, as I said, we need 4D, etc. So, this is how we can choose the dimensionality. Then the question is: what are the benefits of higher dimensions? What do you get by going to higher dimensions? Look at this molecule. I have taken example. These are small spheres. I call them as couplings. I have two different nuclei. One is red, other is blue. Bigger, bigger spheres. They are because of chemical shifts. Of course, there are two different nuclei. 
they will come at different resonating frequency. For understanding purpose, I will say they are all overlapped here. It could be same uh, proton or assume that uh, different chemical shift from different molecules are there. They are overlapped, different chemical shifts and couplings are here. They are all overlapped here. This is the complexity of the 1D spectrum. How do you resolve it? How do you analyze this one? It is a challenge. What we do is you go to 2D NMR. What I do in the 2D? I am going to let us say make all smaller spheres on one dimension. I will bring it here and bigger I will keep it here. I will change in different dimensions. In this dimension, I will based on the size of different spheres, I will change it. I will make the difference. So, now small spheres are here, bigger spheres are here. That is okay. That is one way. And I can go further. I can make three dimensions where I can have different small, small sizes balls are here, different colors here, the bigger spheres one is here, uh, one color, blue color is there, red color is here. I based on the color I changed it, here based on the size I changed it. What did I use? I used three different parameters, size, blue color and red color or otherwise two, color, two parameters, size along this axis and color along this axis and this axis. I remove resolved it. See, this was the spectrum, 1D spectrum, crowded. Now, you see, well resolved, very easy to analyze. So, what is the advantage of this? Uh, to the higher dimension, higher dimension significantly simplifies the spectral complexity and gives spectral dispersion, higher dispersion, better dispersion, meaning you get, you know, uh, instead of crowded, you will resolve it. Instead of, bring, instead of bringing it very close, you can pull them apart exactly what it did by dispersion means you are pulling them apart so that you can easily analyze the spectrum. This is the benefit of higher dimension. All right. I would say if I go to it, we will most of the time deal, dealing with 2D experiment in this course. We do not go to 3D and other things because that is going to be enormous time consuming and we do not have time to discuss all those things. But most of the time 2D will be sufficient unless you are working with a biochemist, working with a biophysicist, working in a very big protein etcetera. We have we require 3D and special experiments. We will stick to only to 2D experiments in this course. Broad classification of 2D experiments. I have in my this is my own interpretation. We have two clarification, two way of classifying. One I call them correlation experiments, other is dissolved type experiments. There are two types of experiments: correlation and dissolved. In the correlation experiment, what it what we are going to do? The information in two dimensions are correlated, related to two, two information are related, their example cosy, tox, etc. How they are related, I am going to explain to you. For example, chemical shift here, chemical shift one other nuclei here may be related. We can correlate this with belong to this like that. These are all correlation experiments and in other case, we have, we have resolved information. I can resolve in two dimensions. For example, in the previous example I showed you. Couplings in one dimension, chemical shift other dimension. Coupling and chemical shift are two different parameters. They come together in the one day NMR spectrum. Can I resolve in two dimensions? Can I take coupling in this dimension and chemical shift other dimension? That is called resolving. They are called resolved type experiments and they could be J result. And again, both these experiments could be homonuclear type and heteronuclear type. For example, you can have a homonuclear correlation experiment and a homonuclear result experiment. You can have homonuclear heteronuclear result experiment and heteronuclear correlation. Both are possible. And homonuclear experiments are each 2D experiment, remind you, are when you design a new experiment, it is given an acronym. For example, COSI, TOXI, J result, etc. Similarly, heteronuclear experiment called HETCAR, HSQC, HMBC, etc. Some of these things we will discuss in the next few classes. So, what you can I, I understand we only way is simplifying the spectrum and to better better resolution, easy for analysis. That is okay. Apart from this, what else we get from the 2D spectra? What else we can get? One is we can get the coupling pathway, you do not get in 1D. Of course, coupling constant we get in 2D I 1D, 
but in a better, better way we can get it. Long range couplings we can get. Reduced dipolar couplings, we can do nuclear overhazard effect, diffusion constant, all those things we can get it here. And both this information, all this information we can obtain both for heteronuclear spin system or homonuclear spin system. All this we can get from the 2D spectra. And this is a, there is a plethora of information. But mind you, all these things we can do in solution state and also solid state. Solution state and MR and solid state and MR are different. Of course, spins, nuclear spin do not know whether it is in solution state or solid state. The information content what you get from solution state, this type of spectra is different. We get sharp signals, well resolved, much better than solid state. Because there are solid state, there are additional information, additional parameters which you have to remove to get short peak. I discussed this in one of the advanced courses in the previous course about solid state and number. So, I do not want to go into the details, but we remember in solids also the 2D experiment can be carried out where we can get chemical shift anisotropy information, homonuclear dipolar couplings, heteronuclear dipolar couplings, quadrupolar couplings, etcetera. All this information we can derive in solids. Again in solids also we can get plethora of information both in liquid state and solid states, you can do two dimensional NMR. You can also do higher dimensional NMR and then we get lot of information which you cannot get from the 1D NMR in the easy way. This is the advantage of 2D NMR. Okay. What are the typical 2D experiments commonly employed? We will deal with the solution state in this course only. We are not discussing solid state. We have Cosy experiment called correlation spectroscopy, sexy means spin echo correlation spectroscopy, no C nuclear overhazard effect spectroscopy, rosy rotating frame overhazard effect spectroscopy, DQF cosy double quantum filtered correlated spectroscopy, HSQC heteronuclear single quantum coherence spectroscopy each letter is highlighted with a different color that is an abstract uh, that is a abbreviation here and HMBC heteronuclear multiple bond coherence spectroscopy, DOSI diffusion order spectroscopy, GHSQC gradient based version of HSQC gradient can be used with other experiments also, but I have given you only this all these experiments are there, but this is uh, these are all the acronyms I have given you only couple of them. But NMR is a huge ocean. If you go to the literature and see in the books and others, more than several hundreds of pulse sequences have been designed, hundreds of such experiments. This is the, the NMR spectroscopy is when you design a new experiment to get a new information, they will give an acronym for this. It giving this acronym tells you what is that experiment, what it does in a short form, what it gives. So, many such experiments are possible. We will discuss couple of them as we go ahead in this course. Then uh, one question may come, okay, there are so many experiments here, say Cosi, Nozi, Rosi, etc. How did this experiment were designed? How do we know which is Cosi, which is Nozi, which is Rosi, etc. How are they designed first of all? Remember, each experiment has its own pulse sequence. What is a pulse sequence? It is a combination of pulses and delays. See, we, we have been discussing this pulse sequence, especially when we discuss spin echo, inept, etc., where we saw, saw this is an inept type sequence. <coughs> we discussed this, which is spin echo, spin echo part of it. We earlier discussed that. So, each experiment has its own pulse sequence and this is a pulse sequence. Pulse sequence is given like this and each of them has different pulses, 90 pulse, 180 pulse, different delays. I told you different delays plays a big role. When we discussed uh, uh, spin echo and inept and APT, I said 1 over 2 j, 1 over 4 j, 1 over j, how the spin vectors become in phase, anti phase, etc. we discussed. So, all those delays matters a lot. Basically, each experiment is a combination of different pulses and different delays like this. And how do you choose this? How, what is the delay? What is the pulse sequence? that is a way you have to spill, understand spin dynamics and then do it. That is the job of a real hardcore NMR spectroscopist, they will do it. And how do you choose the delay everything? That all depends upon, they are tailored 
for a particular information. Already we discussed this, you know. When we have 1 over 2j, we found that in anti for a, uh, it this become antiphasic character. CH vector we saw in this pinnacle. Like that, we can tune it. For in the uh, inept experiment, we saw that 1, uh, no, 1 over 4j, 1 over 2j, and 3 fourth of j, we can get CH coupling, CH2, CH3 can be identified. All those things were designed only based on the delays. So, delay and everything is tuned or tailored to a specific coupling constant. Pulse duration, what it does then? What these durations will do? Different durations here. These pulse durations creates coherences. What is a coherence? Brings the magnetization from z axis to x axis or y axis. It is magnetization in the x wave transverse plane is a coherence. It creates coherences. Transverse coherences between couple spins and allows modulation to encode from one spin to another spin. All those things will be done in duration. And finally, after doing everything in any pulse sequence like this, finally we are going to collect the signal. And, and we apply a pulse here and then start collecting the signal. Final step is to turn on the receiver and start recording the signal as a function of time. This is a FID. So, this is how we design the pulse sequence. Pulse sequences are nothing but combination of pulses and delays. Pulses are 180 pulse, 90 pulse, different angle, flip angle pulses. They can be tuned, delays are tuned for a particular information to be derived. And what happens in any 2D experiment? Okay, we have tuned delay, we have uh, applied 90 pulses. There are delays in between. What happens? This is where the information is transferred from one nuclear spin to another nuclear spin. This transfer of magnetization establishes relation between the spins within the molecule. How does it establish relation? The magnetization transfer mechanism is different for different experiments. So, we will understand how the transfer of magnetization takes place within the molecule and what are the different types of magnetization transfer mechanisms. We will discuss some of the things when we go ahead further, but just to give you an idea, what are the magnetization transfer mechanisms? Transient NOE. Here, the Z magnetization is transferred via NOE. NOE in the along the Z axis, the Z magnetization is transferred because of NOE, that is through space interaction. No need of J coupling, no need of covalent bonds. That is a transient NOE. That is a transfer mechanism. Mechanism of magnetization transfer between couple in two interacting spins is through Z magnetization. Inept, we discussed this last two, three classes. It is anti phase to anti phase coherence transfer. I told you when we apply an anti pulse, magnetize after 1 over 2J, they become anti phase. Simultaneously, you apply 290 pulses on proton and carbon. The anti phase coherence of proton jump to carbon 13. That is what we saw. It is an inept experiment where anti phase to anti phase coherence transfer takes place, where we require J coupling for mechanism of this transfer, J coupling is needed. Toxi is another experiment which we, which we discuss. It is a multiple in phase to in phase coherence transfer. This also requires J coupling. Using J coupling, we can do multiple in phase to in phase coherence transfer done. Rosy is a NOE transfer in the X wave plane during spin lock. What is a spin lock? We will discuss later. Using the particular magnetization transfer mechanism, a particular specific 2D experiment is designed. How? We have different pulse sequences and different delays and different each of these experiment has some mechanism where the magnetization is transferred to derive particular information of a molecule and this particular magnetization transfer mechanism is specific to particular 2D experiment. For example, it is a COSI, HETCAR, HSQC, HMBC, NOTC. These are all the experiments which have been designed with a particular magnetization transfer mechanism in mind. That is how magnet pulse sequences are designed. You may ask me a question, what are the common, there are 500, 600,000 experiments are there in different experiments in NMR. Everything you cannot learn, that is the ocean. But what are the common experiments which we require for our day to day utility? That is, they are cozy, 
ఫేస్ సెన్సిటివ్ కోసి డీకేఎఫ్ కోసి సాఫ్ట్ కోసి రిలే కోసి టాక్సీ ఇన్అడిక్యుయేట్ ఆల్ దోస్ థింగ్స్ దియర్ ఈజ్ ఆల్ రోజీ దీస్ ఆర్ ఆల్ కామన్ టు డే ఎక్స్పెరిమెంట్ విల్ డిస్కస్ కపల్ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ యూ మే నాట్ బీ ఐ పాసిబుల్ టు డిస్కస్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ ఇన్ దిస్ వన్ కోర్స్ బట్ విల్ డిస్కస్ సమ్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఎక్స్పెరిమెంట్ అండ్ వీ అనలైజ్ దిస్ ఫెక్ట్ వర్క్ ఇఫ్ యూ గోట్ హెట్రానిక్ టూ డే ఎక్స్పెరిమెంట్ యూ హెడ్ కార్ ఎక్స్పెరిమెంట్ కలాక్ కార్యలేషన్ ఆఫ్ లాంగ్ రేంజ్ కార్యలేషన్ కపుల్ హెడ్ కార్ రిలే ఇట్ ఇస్ కాల్డ్ హేహా హోమో న్యూక్లియర్ కార్యలేష హెడ్ కార్ హెట్రో న్యూక్లియర్ జే రిజాల్ట్ దీస్ ఆర్ ఆల్ సెట్ టూ డే ఎక్స్పెరిమెంట్ వీ ఆల్సో హ్యావ్ వట్ ఇస్ కాల్డ్ ఇన్వర్స్ ఎక్స్పెరిమెంట్ ఫర్ మై ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఆల్ దీస్ ఎక్స్పెరిమెంట్స్ ఆర్ కాల్డ్ డైరెక్ట్ డిటెక్షన్ ఆఫ్ ఎక్స్పెరిమెంట్ డైరెక్ట్ డిటెక్షన్ ఎక్స్పెరిమెంట్ ఇన్ దిస్ సెన్స్ ఇన్ దీస్ ఎక్స్పెరిమెంట్ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ హెట్రో న్యూక్లియర్ కార్బన్ థర్టీన్ నైట్రోజన్ ఫిఫ్టీన్ ఎట్సెట్రా ఆర్ డిటెక్టెడ్ డైరెక్ట్లీ వేర్ హ్యాస్ దేర్ ఆర్ అదర్ ఎక్స్పెరిమెంట్ కాల్డ్ ఇన్వర్స్ ఎక్స్పెరిమెంట్స్ వేర్ యూ కెన్ డిటెక్ట్ ది ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ అబౌట్ యర్ డైల్యూట్ స్పిన్ ఇండైరెక్ట్ త్రూ అబండెంట్ స్పిన్స్ ఐ విల్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ టు యూ వెన్ యూ గో టు హెచ్ఎస్క్యూసి హెచ్ఎంపీసీ ఎక్సెట్రా దేర్ లైక్ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ హెచ్ఎస్క్యూసి ఎక్స్పెరిమెంట్ హెట్రో న్యూక్లియర్ సింగల్ క్వాంటమ్ కోహరెన్స్ హెచ్ఎంక్యూసి హెట్రో న్యూక్లియర్ మల్టిపల్ క్వాంటమ్ కోహరెన్స్ హెచ్ఎంబీసీ హెట్రో న్యూక్లియర్ మల్టిపల్ బాండ్ కోహరెన్స్ లైక్ దాట్ ఓకే varieties of experiments are possible assume that you know how to do an experiment you have done an experiment simple experiment but how do you interpret the data of course assignment of the peaks in a cosi experiment would it they are all different thing that you know how to do that but generally if a cosi spectrum or any 2d spectrum is given how do you interpret the spectrum there is a way to interpret i am going to show you that for you any experiment a uh, 2d experiment especially homo nuclear i am talking about homo nuclear 2d experiments you can have diagonal peaks also called cross peaks for example peaks peaks which is sitting from uh, this and this diagonal the peaks which are sitting exactly on the diagonal they are diagonal peaks and the diagonal means you should be from the bottom left corner to the right top corner you cannot have this as a diagonal it is anti diagonal okay diagonal refers to peak you start from the bottom left most corner to the right top most corner you draw a line that is diagonal and there are peaks situated outside the diagonal here they are called cross peaks so any homo nuclear experiment especially correlated experiments like cosi taxi etc you will get cross peaks like this and also diagonal peaks fine we will now do a 2d experiment homo nuclear or what or whatever it is let us say i am going to get a peak here this is a diagonal there is no peak on the diagonal fine and i am going to um, you know put the value this is 20 hertz this is 80 hertz this is my some value i have written this is a peak here from the center of the peak come vertically down and of course this is f2 dimension this is f1 dimension the free this is the, if you measure the frequency in this dimension like this they are all f1 dimension if you measure in this dimension they are all f2 dimension this is f1 dimension this is f2 dimension that's how you can measure the frequencies all right now look at it i have peak here from this peak draw a line vertically down or draw a line horizontally you see here if you draw a line here you hit here i will say this is omega 2 this correspond to 80 hertz go along this axis this correspond to omega 1 here it pertains to 20 hertz that means i have a peak which in the f1 dimension is at 20 hertz in the f2 dimension is 80 hertz what does it mean it means the signal evolved during t1 period in the t1 period is f1 period at a frequency of 20 hertz during the process of 2d mixing it so happens the same signal is transferred somewhere to another signal which evolved at 80 mega 80 hertz in t2 
somehow something happened in the molecule during the experiment the signal which was coming at 20 hertz in the t1 period transferred some of its magnetization during something some way how we will do we will worry about it later somehow in some way transfers part of its magnetization to another spin or the same spin it evolved at 80 hertz see it in the t1 period that was at 20 hertz somehow in the t2 period it evolved it, some way to another signal it gives another spin and evolved at 80 hertz you understand this is how you have to interpret the signal if i have a peak here go along this axis this is the frequency in omega 1 dimension this is the frequency in the omega 2 dimension i will give you another example here in this example a peak is appearing at 20 hertz in the f1 dimension i have a peak on the diagonal go horizontally i get 20 hertz go vertically down i get 20 hertz so, a peak on the diagonal if you go horizontal and vertically they, it comes at the same frequency something interesting what does it mean there is a signal there is a because from a particular spin which evolves at a particular frequency in T1 which is 20 hertz it continued and evolved at 20 hertz in the T2 also without any change it did not get affected at all this signal is not affected in the, in the during the mixing period it simply continued there at the same frequency at 20 hertz that is what you have to interpret the peak on the diagonal is on the both the side 20 hertz that means that is remaining unaffected in the t2 dimension whatever was its frequency in the t1 dimension continues to remain same in the t2 dimension uh, we will give another example i have th a peak like this if we go along f1 axis it corresponds to 20 hertz there are two peaks exactly at 20 hertz this also at 20 this also at 20 because if you draw a horizontal line it corresponds to 20 hertz if you draw a vertical line this corresponds to 20 and this corresponds to 80 ok what does it mean there was a signal in the experiment in the t1 dimension during evolution period which was at 20 20 hertz in the evolution period but it what happened during the experiment it remained same also in the t2 dimension it came at 20 hertz at the same time it gives part of its signal to another one which comes at 80 hertz in the t2 dimension this is the point you have to understand the signal which was at 20 hertz in the t1 dimension continue to remain same in the t2 dimension also it gives part of its magnetization to another spin which evolves at 80 hertz this is 80 this is how you have to interpret the 2d spectrum you understood how we can interpret a 2d spectrum so if you look at this one there are typically varieties of 2d experiments this I already showed you 1D NMR of this strychnine. This is a 2D NMR of this molecule. Look at it. This is a 3D NMR HNCOC. I showed you this also earlier. This simple, this is, this is how when you see a spectrum, you should imagine, hey, this is 1D, this is a 2D. Whether it's Cosy or Rosy attacks, it does a different question. But this is a 3D experiment. There are three dimensions here. Okay. Three dimensions here, here, here and here. Three dimensions here. Here there are two dimensions, here only one dimension. This is multi-dimensional experiment, typically multi-dimensional. And for this approximately molecular weight is about 500, this is about 10,000, this is about 30,000 for 3D. 30 kilo Dalton and 10 like that, okay, we will uh, already we have discussed. So, basically what I wanted to tell you in this uh, case is, uh, in this uh, class is, we discussed lot about the 2D and we discussed about the dimensionality and I told you how you have to choose the dimensionality the based on the molecular size, complexity of the spectrum. For a simple molecule let us say water which gives you one single peak in NMR, you do not require more than a T1 high frequency is not necessary 
50 megahertz or 100 megahertz you will get one single peak will do a bigger molecule is okay one day, slightly bigger molecule 1d will do slightly even bigger molecule with large cloud of complexity you can go to 2d to simplify the spectrum go to 3d is even bigger i also told you as you go to higher and higher dimension it takes enormous amount of time the benefit of higher dimension is you can spread the information in different dimensions it aids helps you in simplifying the spectrum and aids you in getting the required information and i showed you so many experiments are there they are called correlated experiment and resolved experiment we can broadly classify into two types of 2d experiment correlated ex experiment again can be homonuclear and heteronuclear similarly resolved experiment can be homonuclear and heteronuclear examples of correlated experiments are cozy nozy rosy taxi etc resolved experiments are heteronuclear j resolved homonuclear j resolved etc especially in the case of heteronuclear experiment we have h hetkar kolak hmbc the inverse experiment like hsqc hmbc hmqc etc varieties of experiment all these acronyms are de different experiments have been given different acronyms are designed pulse sequences to extract some information particular information in a molecule you can give particular type of get particular type of information the question is how do we design these pulse sequences these pulse sequences are nothing but the way, uh, different rf pulses and the delays the delays are tailored for a particular value of j coupling and the pulses could be 90 pulse 180 pulse etc different types of pulses applied along different axis x axis y axis etc and they have different way they does different things during the delays there could be transfer of magnetization the transfer of magnetization can be different mechanism it can be z mag polar magnetization transfer for envoy in phase to in phase for taxi multiple in phase to in phase uh, in the uh, anti phase to anti phase in inept like that there are several mechanism of transfer of magnetization in the rosy there is a spin lag during the spin lag there is a transfer of magnetization so there are several ways we can do it and there are common used experiment i said cozy nozy rosy etc are there how do we interpret it is a easy way one day i took the simple example any homonuclear experiment for example correlated experiment we have a diagonal peak and a and, and also several cross peaks diagonal peaks diagonal is drawn from left most corner left bottom corner to the right top corner and if the peak is sitting on that diagonal peak any other peaks outside of that is a, are called cross peaks i explain to you how do you interpret a 2d spectrum take a particular peak but if draw a line horizontally along for f1 dimension draw vertically for f2 dimension take a peak if you go horizontally and let us say i cut some 20 hertz come down vertically i get 20 hertz how do you interpret that it means there was a signal at 20 hertz for a particular spin which was giving signal at 20 hertz in the t1 dimension which remains you know unaltered evolved with the same frequency in the t t2 that's why it in t2 also it remains at 80 alternately there is one peak let us say at 20 hertz in t1 become 80 in the t2 it what happened it remained it 80 20 became 80 during the process in the experiment in the t2 dimension it became 80 t1 it was 20 it can so happen it can remain 20 also give to 80 and another experiment i showed you there are number of ways you can get the information how do you interpret the 2d data i have explained to you this is the way you have to explain interpret the 2d spectra and typical 2d data i showed you how we can look at the theory and find out and with this basic introduction to two dimensional nmr next we will jump into analysis of a cozy spectrum what a cozy does what a rosy does what a toxy does it some few examples of experiments we we'll take and start interpreting those spectra so from next class we will start with a 2d cozy exp experiment so i am going to stop here stop now today thank you very much